this is Oye Dimolo Cinema Club, and today we are going to be talking about Day of the Dead. It's my pick. And today, to discuss this wonderful work of horror, we've got me and JP, uh, Steve Dez, El Dondino, Jason Eccles, and Raymundo. Um, like I said earlier, today we are going to be reviewing Day of the Dead. Uh, there's a lot of like really interesting layers in this. I think this is probably one of George Romero's um, darkest zombie films, and that's saying something. Um, so why don't we just start off with first impressions? Whoever wants to go first. I would be delighted to go first in reviewing uh, Dia de los Mortes, the movie. Um, <laughs> this thing gets started off perfectly, in my opinion. I've never seen this film before. This is my first uh, experience with it. <clears throat> Um, and I've seen, I think, all the uh, George Romero zombie movies now at this point. Uh, but this one, this one gets started off like this is like this my second favorite way that uh, this this uh, line of movies gets started off because uh, wait, George Romero didn't direct this. I lied, didn't I? No, he did direct it. I'm lying yeah. again. <laughs> um, I really like the way this starts off because she's just in this empty room, and it's a very surreal setting. And uh, you don't really know any symbolism of the room or whatever, but you know, like, when they cut to, like, the the calendar on the wall or whatever, you're like, oh, this is weird. Like, because you don't see any door or anything like that, so you don't know exactly what's happening. And my first impression <clears throat> of that scene is like, oh, okay, well, it's definitely, like, in times, and the zombies have taken over, and she's in this room by herself, and you don't really know what's going on. And then that shock horror to start the film off with, Awesome. Totally awesome. Didn't see it coming. It shocked me a little bit. It was like 80s realness. I, I loved every, like, that was so juicy. And then they cut right into, like, this awesome helicopter scene with this super dope music. And I'm like, this is how you get a movie started. Super dope. Love that right away. Uh, I won't say that the movie didn't have its problems, but mm -hmm. it was thoroughly entertaining. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit campy and it's a little bit cheesy. Uh mostly because of some of the dialogue and acting, but story-wise, it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong stuff. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it reminded me a little bit of uh, 28 uh, weeks later with the whole military base thing, which this thing came first. So 28 weeks later definitely did its take of this story, um, which is a, a more like uh, R-rated sort of uh, drastic um raw version of this thing of this same kind of tale but all in all i was i was really impressed with this movie and a lot of the cast actually the acting was pretty decent from some of the people um but like a, yeah, it's a it's a good zombie movie man i liked it uh, and um you know that's my uh that's my first impression i can't wait to get into some of the deets with y'all oh yes all right who's up next ray my first impression um, was also love the way this opens up. Wow, the bar is being set so high. And then the preceding 45 minutes being like, wait, when is this movie starting? <laughs> so um, that's kind of how I felt. My first impressions, I think uh, once, once the movie starts, uh it's a good time um and all of the makeup stuff chef's kiss so much fun mm. i love how everyone dies um, <laughs> uh that's it cool all right uh who's next I'll go. okay do you know <clears throat> or at least i think that was so, um yeah i had never seen this one before and again I I enjoyed that. The, I'm not gonna lie that it had a little jump there at the very beginning in that room, uh, and throughout there were a little, a few little, very tiny jumps. Yeah, the calendar was interesting. I mean, the pumpkins, pumpkins rocked very slowly. So I'm like, ooh, pumpkin zombies, is what I was thinking. 
Uh, no one has mentioned yet. I thought the music was great, especially the soundtrack towards it. once it starts to unravel that soundtrack because you know there really isn't that much talking at that point anymore. Um, I agree kind of with everyone with Jason about the acting and the lines, but after seeing so many movies lately, I kind of like like this is simple. You know, like, with its limitations or the cheesiness or the campiness, it's just, like, this is a different kind of zombie movie, especially for the time Mm -hmm. of just what everything now. And, I mean, I I watched maybe the first three seasons of The Walking Dead and then stopped. But it's still a pretty fresh idea, I feel like. (laughs) pretty fresh dead idea um yeah so i enjoyed it there were some pretty good characters i mean you had all your kind of archetypes of zombie movies um but there were definitely some some cool interesting characters and uh yeah i also agree with um rayman of it has kind of a jolt at the beginning and the action about it flying around in a helicopter and all that and then yeah you're kind of like at some point someone's gonna die (laughs) at some point (laughs) shit's gonna go down and then at a certain point i was like man i'm pretty sure this movie's gonna end soon but nothing's happened but once it unravels like i think that's what makes this kind of cool or maybe romero like once that drop in the bucket overflows, oh, it overflows. It's not a lot like uh, some of the other zombies that it's scare, scare, scare. <laughs> okay, we're good for five minutes and then scare, scare, scare. This is kind of like, it's, it almost lulls you to sleep, which might not always be the best thing. But then when it happens, it's, uh, it's bangers. So I'll leave it at that. I enjoyed the movie. Uh, definitely has some flaws, but hey, another zombie movie where, and just another movie where the black character or the Hispanic or minority character doesn't die first. So, kudos to uh, Romero. Yeah. Uh, Steve or I'll, Jimmy? I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, so, uh, first time watching the movie, uh, I think I watch also 28 weeks later or days later, I don't know. One of those, 28 months later, years later, one of those, the one that was the most recent, that they were like in Paris and stuff. So first time watching this movie, I thought it was superb, the acting of the main characters, primarily. Uh, The ones that I got to criticize a little bit, just because I was like paying a little bit more of attention to those, were the extras. I was just Mm -hmm. like, (laughs) <laughs> Yo, I need to like see the take of all these extras doing zombies. There were some that were very committed. There were some that were just going like, "Yo, where's my paycheck?" <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, the pace for me was okay because I actually watched this movie in like 1.2, 1.3 speed. So that was like <laughs> to me it was the appropriate like time speed to like watch the. <laughs> Uh, That's great. I did Love like that. that there were diverse characters. Uh, there was a lot, but I mean, it's, you know, back in the day, but there was a lot of like racist comments in this movie. Uh, <laughs> the insane amount. Uh, but, but, and, but, uh, but, but, I think but. for like the time period, uh, the limited amount of location that they had, it was a great film. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, for being like, I'm not like a big zombie movie fan or person, but I really like this film. So those mm-hmm. are the questions. JP? Uh, I just wanna, I, I, real quick, uh, there were a lot of racist remarks, but it came from the certain characters and usually just the military, which I think was uh, uh, on purpose uh, in, in showing Hundred percent. Like, yeah. and I think that's going to be something we're definitely going to talk about, uh, just because it's like such an indicative part of his uh, work in general. Um, yeah. 
So we'll get into that. So what's your first impression, JP? Oh, I liked it when 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 the people that use the bad words died. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really like that. Uh, I think it's great that the first zombie that we see in the movie is like an animatronic, and then we see some really like lame ass caked motherfuckers <laughs> in town, which I really. <laughs> Like, I thought, like, oh, no, like, it's just that one that's going to look cool. But no, nah, they're like, there was other ones that looked pretty cool. The animatronics in this movie was pretty damn good. Because uh, I could tell when they used puppetry and when you when they were using actual people. Like, a lot of those deaths, like, you, you couldn't use people for that. It was straight up, like, like puppets and whatnot. And they were really realistic. Uh, the gore in this movie, uh, when it happens, like, because, yeah, I agree. It's a very slow-burning movie. And a lot of the intensity and the suspense comes from, you know, our human characters. It's like, like I'm not worried about what's outside the fence. I'm worried about you guys. Like, you guys are going to end up, like, murking each other before the before those assholes come in barging about. But, you know, again, like, there's I, this is my first time watching the movie. But I, know, I, I knew how it ends because, like, like the, that ending is so iconic. It's a, it's in so many like top ten, top one hundred cinema lists mm -hmm. and whatnot. Like of course, like 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 top one hundred uh, iconic improvised cinema lines. Choke on it, choke on it. Number twelve, choke on it. You know. <laughs> choke on him. Is is that what he was saying? He was saying choke on it. Choke on him. Oh. Yeah. You know, Wait, you know, what? Who said well, choke on it? Uh, uh, the, the, the spoiler, uh, the Sarge guy who ends up getting ripped in half because, you know, the falky part of his body is being eaten. So he's Right. I was wondering what he was saying. I, I rewinded it once and I couldn't get it the second time, so I just gave up. He was, but choke on what? What was he, choke, what do you mean? Choke on, <laughs> choke, on, choke on his legs, choke on his dick. They're going to eat that part of his body first, you know? What a weird improvised line to keep in the movie. Right. Well, I mean, it's, I think it suits them. Yeah, but like, yeah, and you know, the, and those guys who are dying, they, 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 they acted pretty damn good being maimed and eaten alive. Yeah, no, yeah. Like this, I definitely think that these are some of the best deaths in like the whole canon. Yeah. Um. So my first impression, this isn't my first time seeing this specific one. Um, but I chose it because, like, I think it's a very interesting time in, like, his, can like, in his universe. Because this technically takes place, like, five years after the initial zombie apocalypse. So this is, like, a group of individuals that had, like, grew. It was, a, like, you can see, like, I think one of the best parts of a George Romero film is how much of the story he tells without telling. Like, he relies on his background so much to like explain what's going on without actually saying, okay guys, here are the rules. Like you see like the entire like caves and caves filled with like RVs and stuff like that. So like this used to be a community that like dwindled to nothing. And like, that's why it's like such a tense movie the whole time. Um, and which is why I picked it. And I, I'm really glad you guys liked it. So um, one thing that I did want to talk about in this was like the racist depictions in this, because I feel like George Romero really like that's something that's very important in his work. You know, like that's I, I think that's why he likes playing with the undead, because it's the greatest equalizer of all death is. Um, so, like, do you guys think that it was used in a way that like helped the story and like helped develop our characters? like biases towards the characters or like how did you guys feel about it uh i uh, i'll go i really didn't like that the only people shot in this movie were grayed or green-skinned people like i, I thought that was very very so much <laughs> you guys go ahead well, I would say that I feel like it helped the story, uh, actually. I liked the racism in it. Uh, not that I enjoyed race. The <laughs> race <here. laughs> it's not that I enjoy the, the, you know, the racist banter per se. But when you have characters like that in the movie, it's really easy to know who the villain is and who you should, like, 
hate because it's like it's very revealing of them to be like that openly racist. It's like this. I don't like you. And this is how I feel about you. Or this is how I was raised. And this is, you know. So, I mean, it just kind of like lets you know, like, this is clearly the bad guy. Uh, they're up to no good. They don't have your best interest at heart. And should things like if, you know, if it should junk hit the fan, they're not going to have any uh, love for you. They're not going to protect you. They're not going to have your back. So it just kind of, for me, it's just a very easy and simple way of knowing who's who and what's what in the story. Uh, I, I never really mind racism in a movie if it's done in a way where, like like George has done it, in a way where it's like, just kind of makes everything obvious. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm okay yeah. with that. It, and, it, and it's character revealing. I don't mind, you know, racism or racist words in movies if it's character revealing. Well, and, like, I'm really glad that that's, like, how you put it. Because, like, I thought it was also very interesting because I think it really highlighted a lot in John's character, the guy who drew, drew, drives the helicopter. Just because, like, you can just see how much more aware his body language in general is compared to, like, everyone else. And that just, I think, influences so much more of his character. And I also think um, that also explains why uh, Miguel in this is just so high strung because like he's one of them but he's not in like yeah. such a weird way and he has to balance that on top of doing his job like so like no wonder the guy's a wreck when you first see him you know from the get-go yeah i i i agree with you guys also the fact that it's military right and it's the thing as I mean, and we can say about zombies and they lose everything and they just they they have one thing in mind, right? As the as Frankenstein says, right? They only have one, one thing left that is, you know, to eat flesh. But then the humans are the ones that are, you know, supposed to be more uh, in control and all that. And as and again, time and time again, and in times of war and everything. It, little by little, humanity gets lost, right? And what do things revert into, you know, usually some sort of races or finding something different in other people. And so I thought it was, it's, it was done nicely. And it's usually the military or people in power that the only way when you, you, you got to find something different and you got to find something that can put you above of the other people. And the easiest way is to, whether it's language or color or stuff like that. And so, yeah, it, it, it was done well. And as it, things escalated, so did the racism. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you go into the, in, in the, in the prison, who do you ne normally have to buddy up to? Your mm -hmm. own race, you know? So, uh, it was well, yeah. I've been, really been surprised by Romero and these zombie movies in general, but good ones that deal with that kind of stuff of, you know, kind of softly putting in some of those um, social and racial undertones in a just brain being eaten movie. Well, and like I also think it's very interesting that like you also kind of see it in the way that they treat the zombies too. Like the zombies being experimented on, like Bub's character. You know, the guy who played Bub, like y'all can't tell me he did not act the crap out of that part. Um, you know, it's just like this whole idea of just being like, no, they're intelligent and they can feel things. And like, how does that influence everything that's happened before? And it, like, it's, just like a nice little layer that like I think is also that adds to the environment that's going on too. That's a hundred percent accurate. I feel like this is the first zombie movie I've ever seen where I felt some empathy for the zombies. I didn't like that the zombies were like being experimented on like that and, and chained up against the wall and you know being like prodded and made fun of. It's like in in, in this movie like the zombies start to develop some intelligence and you can see like there's certain moments where it's like, I didn't, I wasn't sure right away. Like, if this, is this bad acting? Cause I feel like these zombies are feeling too much right now. You know, like, 
the zombie would be chained up by its neck against the wall or whatever, and they would say something. The zombie would be like, who? You know, it's like, wait a minute. Like, but you don't have yes. feelings, zombie. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, you know, the zombie, you know, that one zombie, who was Bud, who was uh, developing fast or whatever, or faster than the rest, you know, I, I was wondering, was it a director's choice or were some of the extras just taking, like, weird liberties to, like, kind of show a little bit of emotion? I was okay with Bud doing it because that's the story, but some of them did, it, which reminds me of what Steve said about like some of the extras, like some of them were in it, some of them were not in it, some of them just were there for a paycheck, but some of them made some really weird choices as zombies. I'm like, come on, why'd you leave that in the movie? I'm like, I know it's not easy to direct like a hundred zombies on screen at one time, but sometimes you'll see a zombie like go right into the camera and do something weird just to like be seen by the camera. I'm like, why'd you keep that take? I hate that that zombie did that. Mm -hmm. They they really needed that voucher. Well, <laughs> that or they were talking about the about the the zombies have all the feels in this. At the beginning, when they're trying to corral them, literally corral them, and they're calling them, and it's like they're not coming, and then they're like they're afraid because they know what's happening or they know what is gonna. So at the very beginning, they already put that seed into our brains of like. Wait, are zombies getting smarter? So well, that's why. That sorry, sorry. No, it's no, just, no, no, it's just like in the first one in uh, the Living Dead, the little girl uses a tool. She stabs her mother with a trowel. So like they've always kind of had this, and like I think this is something that George Romero, as an artist, was developing too, which is like I think kind of interesting that like he actually thought about it and it's like no this is this is something they can do yeah that's like See, i've thought about that many times and i'm glad you brought it up because the little girl does you know stab her mom or whatever but i always attributed that to george romero didn't know that these were zombies you know he just yeah. knew that they were the living dead and like so i don't think this is just my guess you know i could be way off but it's just my guess that he just hadn't developed these things enough to know what they do or don't do you know mm -hmm. Can you show us a little there. girl, Jason? What's that? So that people know. Can you show? Oh us yeah, I, I am actually wearing that little girl on my shirt right now. <laughs> oh <laughs> gosh! <laughs> 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 yeah, she's my favorite. Well, they, 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 must, Aberson. they must develop some form of cognitive, uh, like, like efficiency, just purely based on their diet, brain food. How about that alligator? It wasn't a zombie alligator. Oh yeah, that, that, that alligator. I thought it was fake. That was, <laughs> good, that was some good animal acting. That one knew. It didn't have to look Man, back. If, I, if, I, if you're like, oh, you're oh, the yeah. zombie next to that alligator, I'd be the fastest zombie ever. Just like, yeah. <laughs> so there are a couple of things about that alligator that I recognized right away because when I saw it, I was like, wait, what? And I started cracking up. The guy, the alligator's mouth is tied. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, it is. It? It is. Ah, poo. It's, it's it, look, like, it looks like it looks like dried up leaves, though. At least you know that's I think how they try to mask it, but it totally was tied up. It, yeah, and then it's like. I was thinking, like, well, this is Florida, so anything can happen, you know? So it doesn't even, like, I mean, alligators are in Florida, plus it's Florida, so why wouldn't the alligator be coming out of a bank? That's what alligators do in Florida, right? Exactly. They got accounts. They gave Mr. Red peanut butter, but they, they wired up my gator? That ain't nice. <laughs> there were so many, it's interesting, he had so many cool shots at the beginning to set up, and then they go underground, and they go to this one, like, that indoor i mean just like the newspaper floating around and then stopping right at where it says like the dead live or whatever like especially in 85 to you know to do that that's not just like let's cgi a newspaper to stop and then we are able to read what it says on there i so, thought that was a super dope touch too i almost thought that was going to be the title of the movie the way that that came up. I'm like, oh, is that the title? And I was like, it's not. But I thought it was a nice touch. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm glad we discussed that. So I guess, like, let's talk about our favorite deaths. Like, who had, like, the, gnar like, 
what was like your favorite cinematic death on this? Well, oh, that's a good oh, question. The plot. I, there, oh, there's two. Well, um, I, I. So there's two in the sense of one of them. I'll, I'll go with the first one. It doesn't look like the most like gory, crazy one, but it's uh, is it Miguel, <laughs> the, the, the Hispanic? Uh, you, was you it Miguel or my that name? actor's commitment? He had to lose in his arm just for that one yeah. scene, only to be eight later. Like, wasn't yeah. that crazy? So, so that's the thing. Had he lost it, or did he like know that he was dying? Or that he was about to turn. That's my question. But I thought that was so cool. Like, you know, the other guys are like, shoot me. I don't want to become one. And, and then the, the the guy that's uh, the poor man's John Goodman, uh, he he's like, uh, kill a couple people. And then he kills himself because he's like, I don't want to turn into one. This guy's like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to turn or I'm going to get eaten and I'm going to let everyone else get screwed over as well. <laughs> I, I, I personally think that the playful racist banter between the military, between his comrades and himself just made him petty. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just go with the pen? I think I think that's the Navy. That that's the Navy term, though, the petty officer. So. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa! Wow, that, that so it doesn't joke. really fit in here. But uh, thanks for trying. You will get your uh, gift that uh, on your way out. Mhm. Mm All right. Well, anyway. I think the one that made me cringe the most is like when the guy is like actually getting his face like torn into like where you like actually oh, see the eyelid the eye eyeball. and like the oh, eyeball like the eyelids were fun yeah yeah that was that was a cool one like i mean obviously the classic one is the the leg part which is like really fun but i think that's the one that like really got me to go mm. oh my I, I love the the i don't know oh anyway other people jump in before i jump in talking about another another no i just I like the fact what one, no, of go ahead, lesser, go ahead. one of the lesser military guys who's like jumping and running around. <laughs> then at the very end, he jumps on the pallet and like slides because he. And I'm like, that is literally just him setting up to be on pallet so they can have the fake. You know, this is my head and this is the body because it mm -hmm. was so like unnatural. I gotta get on those pallets. Like I'm gonna try to get away. Oh, uh, I fell on the pallet. But if I'm not mistaken. He is all dressed in black, and they have the background black. And I think if you if you don't blink when they're pulling his head off, and he's like, Arr! like you can kind of see that they pull his whole like they just pull him, and he's like basically wearing a black sheet. And that's but am I right? Does someone know how they did that? Because that's what no, it looks like. Because I, like I kind of like not knowing. <laughs> okay. Okay, they just decapitated him then. That that one that one was the one I liked. It was because it was very comical in a way. Because you know they they're gouging his eyes out. They're literally, uh, like, like bowling balling his fucking head. Yes. And then they pull it, and then it's funny because the ADR like you could hear like the scream change from being real. It's like it's a regular scream. It's like ah ah. Then, ah but then the scream just keeps on going. Mm -hmm. Like, where's that? Where's that air coming from? His his head's off the body. His diaphragm. His, <laughs> so like, it, it's it's funny. Like, it's great because like you see the the the, the 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 puppetry and the animatronics in that head still moving because you know it's still alive. But once you rip it off, like it's still going, which is still pretty neat. But it's still screaming. It's both like, oh, that's great, but it's also like, uh, eh, not too realistic. But it's a fucking zombie movie. Mm -hmm. who, who gives a shit? But that one was, I thought, really good. Uh, I really liked that death. Yeah, yeah. Jason. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, Please. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a zombie in the beginning of this movie that's missing its bottom jaw? 
Is that a that's thing? The, that's the puppet from mm -hmm. the beginning. That's literally the first zombie that we see. Okay, yeah. That's my favorite zombie. And however that zombie lost his jaw or that lady lost his jaw, that's probably my favorite death scene <clears> we didn't see. Um, <laughs> but I think, like, there's so many good, there's so much good makeup in this thing and so many great special effects. And this, I mean, this is kind of the, like the stuff I've sort of liked because there's so much creativity that goes into it. It's not just someone on a computer drawing and, you know, no shade to people who do that type of animation because it's obviously difficult, but I just like, I just like all those people in Hollywood being employed to do this kind of movie magic stuff. And mm -hmm. I think like with the way technology has emerged, I think it could be done even better than it was 20, 30 years ago. Uh, with that being said, my favorite death scene is probably Miguel's. I mean, because, it's very, it's very fulfilling and it's very honorable uh, of a villain to get taken out that way because he's a scumbag and he has a very deserving, very good uh, death scene. I, I usually get mad in movies when the villain doesn't get the, the death scene that they deserve. And I felt like his was like chef's kiss. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're, Miguel's the one in the elevator. Uh, Miguel yeah, is he, the, he the, the, the Miguel is the one. He's the the last soldier to die. No, you're saying the Don't guy was the a, Oh, that's not Miguel. No. Miguel well, the one who Miguel lost his arm, and and decided to take everyone with him. Cause like like his name starts with like a. C. That starts with an R. Oh, oh the, the, internet, the internet has it wrong then. The sergeant, right? Yeah, the guy who like takes over and was like, "I will kill you." See, look, yeah. the internet's got it messed up. Wait, where is it? Well, you can't yeah. believe everything you read on the internet, bruh. Well, clearly not. Look, oh yeah. wait, what's it say? It says, "Oh, that look at Barry. That's character. a great headshot." Oh, by the way. They said his name's Miguel. They lied. Yeah. They yeah. lied. Uh, but yeah, that's a. Uh, that's, I think he has a wonderful death scene, whatever. I forget his character's name then, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, uh, talking funny. about no, over, it, it, over, Rhodes, Rhodes, his name is Rhodes. Rhodes. Yeah, Rhodes. T talking about overacting, because he was a bit over the top, but the fear that he showed in that hallway scene is really good, I feel like. The fear of him, like, his worst fear is happening, right? Like, He's mm -hmm. now lost control, and now this bub guy, which he had a couple of times where he could have killed him, is like after him and actually getting him, and he's getting run down, right? And then yeah, he's only... on top of his, it's his own self demise. Like he didn't look yeah. out for his fellow soldiers. He makes this big deal from the beginning of the movie, like these are my soldiers, and I'm not losing any more right. men, and I'm supposed to protect these men, and then he's the guy that locks them out of the room at the end. And then like, he just, he gets mutilated in so many ways. He gets shot in the back a couple times. He has to drag yeah. himself down the hallway only to get pulled into a door and then ripped apart and his legs, you know, it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, yeah. my, my, mine is right. What, what, what were you on? Just Google? Uh, yeah, mine's on Google. I have a picture of the actor who played Miguel. No. Yeah, mine says what Google says. I have oh, my, my on Google too. My they, got it. They, they used the wrong picture for Miguel's character, but they used the right picture for Rhodes. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So on IM, IMDb, it's uh, it's uh, correct. Oh, he passed away in 2019. Rest in peace, Rhodes. Rest in peace, bro. <laughs> Seven, yeah. I'm 70 years old. So. All right. Um, there was something else I wanted to bring up. What was that? Oh, do you think that John, the guy, the helicopter guy, and the guy who d plays with the radio were actually roommates? That's what you <laughs> want to talk about. I do. Like, I think it's. I think it's indicative of something else. I do. I do. Like John went down the tunnel of doom after that. Like he wasn't going for the lady. He was going for. His roommate. Really? Because he did say we need to repopulate the world. Yeah, but lady. like, how would they be able to repopulate? Very, 
humanitarian, very gentlemanly. You know, it's like, hey, it's like, like if we have to, we have to. Um, well, and it's just like, like even in the the scene, like the or, ending scene where she's like crossing off the November or whatever, like they're nowhere near her. Like they're off in the distance yeah. doing their own thing. They, they are fishing together. Which I have a couple questions about the end, but if other people want to jump in on the um, um so on I the get bird. that vibe personally. Um, I see how you guys can draw that conclusion. I think it's a pretty loose conclusion, but it's not impossible. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just like the fact that like they're both living like way off the campus together. <laughs> I it thought about that. I think, the re they, I think they just want to be away from those creepy soldiers, you know? Yeah, they brought that up. That also, John has one of my favorite lines in the movie, the pilot. I mean, he's one of my favorite characters because of his early line when he's trying to, like, make some sense of everything. And he's like, why are we even here? We need to just go fuck off on an island somewhere and get drunk until we get killed because there's nothing we can do anymore. And I'm thinking, like, if I'm in that situation, I'm with that guy. Because I'm like, yeah. why are we sitting here trying to like figure out how to stop zombies when we're outnumbered 400 to 1? Let's just go to an island and forget it. I mean, he was extremely smart because he even knew the pecking order, you know, when he's trying to explain it to, uh, to, to, the, to the lady, to the woman, because I can't remember her, the doctor. And he's like, look... I'm the pilot, so they, they can't mess with me. Uh, I guess his lover, if that's what we're going with, is the electrician. So they're they're good. And, you know, he's kind of like naming off the people that are most important. Uh, so he he's the smartest character. And I think they he was all the way in the in the back. I mean, they did have a pretty sweet setup in, in the back, so maybe I can kind of see. Or they're just like, we're not military. Because then she even kind of goes at them like, you know, you aren't helping out. You're just kind of doing your own thing. And that's why later it's like, I guess I am, I guess I do have hero material or whatever those lines mm -hmm. were. Um, but interesting. So, Michaela, did you... Um, do you have stuff to back up your your claim? Well, no, it's just like, I felt like this time around, like the second time watching, like it's just John's character seems very much like someone who's like, I'm going to take care of my own and that's it. And like he was kind of really overprotective more of the electrician versus uh, the female scientist. Really? I thought so. No, I thought so too. When he went back, I was like, "That it's not for her. It's for it's for his buddy." <laughs> although, although I guess the buddy at the when uh, John's out of ammo at the very end, the buddy uh, shoots it, the the zombie that's got his leg, and he makes some comment uh, as well. So uh, yeah, I guess um, like, your, I mean, your argument like is that. Because the core good guy group were protecting each other and saving each other, they were gay for each other. Well, I also so think that two had chemistry that like the woman just didn't seem to be a part of that I'm drawing this from. And so if I'm the only one who felt that, then like I'm just gonna I'm gonna yeah, JP, it. JP felt it too. detail. Because <laughs> I'm sure that that's not what the intention was. But it just like some of the, some of the way that things lined up was just kind of like mm hmm. Well, JP felt it. Dino, did you feel it? I I mean, I don't know. Maybe a second viewing, but I just thought they were. He's the pilot. Dude's the technician. The mm -hmm. you know, like I thought. I thought that was the their their roles. So that they was had my take. Worked, they had worked with each other, and Raymond? he's. He's French or Haitian, right? He was Haitian. Haitian. I mean, Haitians uh, have a little Frenchiness in them. They might go loosey, goosey, whichever way. I mean, she was taken, so you know, kind of in time of war, you never know what happens. You know, you gotta, you gotta find, you know, love somewhere. That's when there's like no one else. Your other option is like necrophilia. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh. Raymond, what's your take? Did you have that feeling at all? No, but I'm I'm always here for a little like queer investigation in older films. <laughs> so so I, maybe there was. I, I think I'd I'd watch it a little bit more attentively to see. You 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 know why I'm kind of like on reluctant or I didn't get it? Because I thought his his buddy I was like, is that Mr. Bean? Like <laughs> at the very beginning, I could have sworn it was Mr. Bean and I was like Oh man, Rowan Atkinson in a Romero film? I was like, is he? I thought he looked like Mr. Bean in one scene too. I will admit that. I will admit it. The way that his nose and like ears are. They're European. Steve, what did you think? Be like Irish? I think he is Irish, yeah. Like he's supposed to be Irish, but the accent comes and goes. Well, he's drunk half the time, so. Oh, that's true. But maybe he's got to oh, bring in the, the 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 subtle racism again. <laughs> Just kidding. They, oh, they no, called him names too, actually. They did. They did. did. So. No, I mean, I know that I'm probably reading into that, but like, I I don't know. They had a little bit more chemistry than anybody else, so. Okay, on um, that. Well, the I, scientists I, would be into chemistry. <laughs> hey, oh. I thought I thought they were pretty charmed by her because they saved her a bunch, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't know, uh, they could have literally just be like, "Okay, she's gonna get us killed," so we're we're just not, you know, yeah. not gonna bother with her. I do have a question though regarding the end, where it could be. This is why it could or could not be the. Um, uh, them being in a couple, I guess. Did they make it? I mean, she kept getting startled by these, um, you know, these kind of daydreaming or dreaming moments. And it starts with a calendar, and then she's got her own kind of made up calendar. But what, who's to say that they, they made it or, you know, does that make, like, I, I know I exactly kinda, what you're saying. I, it, I don't think it matters if they made it. You know, what's insane. Like I, I, I'm willing to like give like, oh, maybe it is some kind of weird, like purgatory or whatever, like in her final moments of like life, she's living in her mind, this fake life that, that she wished that she had mm -hmm. with the two gentlemen. But no, nah, I think, in my personal opinion, I think they did make it. And I hate it, in a way, because like when they said, like, I hope someone refueled the plane, it's like, oh, 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 because oh, that's how, you know, the movie starts. And I wished, I wished to God that that once that fucker came out of the plane, it's like, like oh, we're almost out. Go! Like as soon as that happened, freeze frame and then ending credits. Like, I, like, wish, I wish that was the case. Like, <laughs> where were the fishing rods from? Like, did they stop at a Bass Pro shop before they made it to this uh, deserted island? Like, Wait that's a second. Like, he made that. <laughs> Remind me after the zombie jumps out at her and then they do like she sort of wakes up thing. What happened yeah. after that? How did this thing? Yeah, X is off another day off of like the calendar that she made to show that it's been like at least a couple weeks since the last time. Oh, I thought it was like five days. Yeah. Since. And so, then, so, and then, been, so they did make it somewhere. Well, mm -hmm. the, and then I, she looked off into the distance and there by the beach uh, fishing with fishing rods and having a romantic getaway, according to Michaela. And she's so they the made third, it. They made it then. The, the, she's the third wheel on their uh, on their honeymoon paradise, uh, you know. So they play that same game in the movie um, Dawn of the Dead, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, mm -hmm. and they get away to this island, and then the end credits, they, they make it to the island, and then when they get there, there's a thousand zombies. Oh. Mm -hmm. there's, there's another one. This might be either 28 weeks or 28 days where they get off the helicopter and they think they're safe, but then you hear on the radio, I think the little girl had been bitten, right? Is that mm -hmm. the one? And and they kind of messed up. I think that's that movie. There, I like I like all these helicopter ending 
uh, zombie movies that all have a different take to it. So that's kind of cool. I've seen a bunch that don't have the same uh, the same ending. Keeps me <laughs> on my toes. Well, okay. I guess with that, I think we're about ready to wrap up. So uh, let's start final thoughts. Who wants all right. To kick- all right. Why don't Ray you go first? Because uh, I believe yeah. you got to get out of here in a few moments. Yeah. Um, final thoughts are maybe I'll watch this again with a group to change my mind, but I still feel story wise, I was a little let down with that first half of the movie. Uh, the second half was more of what I was expecting. It was like very action packed. There's a lot going on, a lot of kills, a lot of really cool kills, but it just kind of felt like for 50 minutes, I was waiting for something to happen. So Final thought. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, I'll jump in. Um, I will say that uh, I did enjoy this movie, and I completely understand what Raymond means about the movie starting off kind of slow. Uh, and, and it is paced differently for a lot of these zombie movies. But I will say that because I've seen so many zombie movies, and because Romero is like the godfather of these things, uh, there, there's a certain leash I let him have because yeah. this movie does um, a lot of ex- exposition that about zombies that I just didn't know. Um, and, I, and I just kind of take them as gospel is um, canon because Romero said so. But when they start doing like all the scientific uh, overlays and discussions about like, you know, oh, these zombies and they don't have a digestive system. So they're just eating out of like habitual, blah, 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 all that stuff. I'm like, oh, that's great because I never knew all that. Like they're not eating for nourishment. They're just like in a weird program right now. And and, and they're no, nothing works in them. There's no organs or anything. And I had never really considered it. But I'm like, thank you for that science. So. I can understand how the, the the average viewer may look at it the way Raymond looked at it. But I looked at it like, oh, this is great zombie information, and this movie's good for that. But if you were in 1985 and you were looking for a good popcorn movie on a date or something, and you're like, you know, you want to see some action, this wouldn't have been it for the first 40 minutes of the movie. He's right. You know, but then like the, the last half of the movie, it's just bop, 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 and it just doesn't let up. And But the tension gets built so much to that. Um, I, I liked it. I like the way that it was done. I understand um, anyone's opinion who feels that way too, though. I will say that uh, I would recommend this movie to zombie people um, who love zombie movies and horror fanatic people. This is probably something that you sort of have to see uh, if you're in that um, if you're in that niche group. Uh, I would say that I would watch this again, um, much like Raymond with other people. Um, and uh, there's some things that I really enjoyed that I will glean from that and take away as a filmmaker. Uh, there's probably something in this movie, I won't say what, that I will absolutely steal from this film. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's my final take. Nice. Uh, I'll go, because uh, I'd like to ask a question to my Kayla when it's up to her turn. How did this do in 95? Did people really enjoy it? What is it a hit? Because I think a lot of times when we watch older movies, We've already seen so much of how movies have evolved and the thought process and all that, that sometimes we're like, that was really a lot of dead air, basically. But back then, it could have just been a crescendo and just like this slow tension and build. And like, again, we've seen so many zombie movies and now the the super cracked out running zombie uh, zombies that we're not used to these earlier zombie movies where them just learning about zombies might have been more terrifying uh, than what we've been accustomed to. Also, what, 1995? There were probably like five movies. 85. 85. Yeah, that, I said 85. People always think that I'm saying 95. I don't know why. But 85, a year after I was born. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, there were, what, like five movies that came out that year. So it's like this had to be up there in just like building sensation. I would recommend this movie uh, to a whole slew of people. I will watch this movie again. Again, with people, I think would be a lot more fun. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a perfect movie. But for a zombie movie, it was very enjoyable. Same, like, it's almost, you know what I enjoy? 
I enjoy Romero just trying stuff out, you know, just like, let me try this. It's almost like he could go the Star Wars way and just repeat everything time and time again and make it this whole kind of Skywalker saga. But no, he's like, what if I got bugged? What if I take this movie to just kind of uh, uh, explore this one idea that I have about what these zombies could be? And he has a little playground where he was allowed to do that. Nowadays, I don't think he would be allowed to do that. I don't think they would allow that, you know, 40 minutes or hour maybe of just talking science and talking the military taking over shit. I don't know if they would really allow that today, you know? They would be like, you get 15 minutes of that or you get 20 minutes of that. And then we got to see titties and we have to see gore and we have to see, you know, a gay kiss on uh, on screen about zombies because you know Hollywood is trying to, you know, pull that agenda on the kids that are watching it. We, we see there's nearly people on screen eating out other people. So. Hey <laughs> so before we move on to the next final thought, I will say, uh, because I always like for us to know this when we watch a movie, um, the movie's budget was $3.5 million in 1985, and it grossed $34 million at the box office. I would say that's pretty respectable. Yeah, I think it was overshadowed just a little bit by this incestuous pseudo movie starring Michael J. Fox that year. <laughs> so it could have had more if it weren't for that one. Just, just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. But, but the budget of Back to the Future versus this budget? Come on now. Look at all those like guts and gore. Yeah, no, like, considering that's like all he had, like I think he used it effectively. Also, can we uh, acknowledge how awesome that movie poster is with a gump, yes. a zombie holding a gun? I mean, that's sick. <laughs> Wait, is that a modern <laughs> one? Or is that a little too badass, though. <laughs> a little bit. Is that a modern one or a, a period one? Because no, that's, 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 that's the box the cover. That's the poster. I I like uh, also. Um, IMDb because a lot of times they have like uh, the foreign one, you know. <laughs> like oh uh, yeah, no that that that's actually the original poster, but this is this is one of the other original posters. Yeah. So there was a couple for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, just either JP or Steve. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll go. I mean, in terms of like, especially this particular movie drama uh, genre, Day of the Dead. I still prefer Coco. I, if you want to watch like a maybe better one, maybe Book of Life. That one's more in relation to the actual holiday. Um, we should watch those two movies. Wait, we've seen Coco, right? Probably. We've we seen Coco. Have we? I don't think we. We need to see this. It's a, it's a Latin group, everybody. Uh, next week, we're watching Coco and Book of the Dead and whatever Guillermo del Toro's putting out right now that pinocchio movie um yeah no i i i, I... <laughs> no is... one gave jp any love on that final joke you... <laughs> i liked it i like the movie um yeah it's pretty fun um you know i'm not uh it's no secret i'm not much of a horror fan but i, I dig this movie and you know uh, the right people die horribly. Uh, I kind of wish we talked more about the characters individually and whatnot. Mm, yeah. but I'm not going to lie because I really did not like Miguel's character at all. So I was glad that he died for all the wrong reasons. But yeah, uh, for all in all, uh, A-plus movie. If you want to watch it with a group of buddies, yeah, sure. If you want to watch it by yourself like a fucking freak, yeah, sure. Why not? I I'd probably would watch it alone, make it eating popcorn. Yeah. Said that. I did I what eating popcorn while watching a movie? That's normal. Sure. That's all I said. Cool. That's all I said. Roll sure. the clip back. Roll it back. A A plus movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Steve. Okie dokie. Real simple and easy. I enjoyed this movie. Uh 
I would say I have not seen a lot of zombie movies myself, but I honestly, out of the very few zombie movies I watched, this might be my favorite, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, I really, just to get very brief into characters, I really enjoyed the character that was the that was the zombie that was getting experimented on. Mm -hmm. Like Bub. before he was like locked up and stuff, I was like, oh my God, look at that poor zombie just in the corner, like feeling lost. Like I feel bad for the guy. And then when he finds the dude dead, like I felt bad for this guy. Uh, I actually wanted to hear what the guy had to say, the mad scientist, Dr. Frankenstein guy before he got shot. He was like, wait, I'm gonna tell you something, boom. It's like, man, I wanted to hear what that guy had to say. Uh, and I agree with JP in the point of like, I wish the movie would have ended way before of like the whole beach area, would have been like the helicopter and then credits rolled in. I think that would have made the movie even more amazing, in my opinion. Uh, but final thoughts, great movie. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, did you give your final thought? I did, but I just want I just thought of something. What a cool not only the, the kill of the of the bad guy at the very end of Bud shooting him, but the biggest like dick move, Bub just going like wham <laughs> <laughs> saluting him at the end, you know, just like all you yeah. had to do was salute me and I'd not kill you probably. Yeah, no, like I, I, I think that he Bub is like probably one of the most underrated characters in this whole thing. Like whoever they found, like the casting director who figured out that this was the guy, like earned their money. See, now that you bring that up, I think that but that salute was probably the second most pettiest move. <laughs> but you know, pretty darn good. Yeah. Yeah, we all wish we had that like clever moment in the argument, huh? Plus, he had to work extra hard. That guy's a dead. <laughs> So, Dino, you had a question for me. Well, I, well, no, it was how, how it was, uh, how it was received in 85. Yeah, no, like, it's, it's good to hear that it did well. Cause like, I also really do appreciate you bringing up the fact that this does feel like George experimenting. Cause like, you, you really don't get to see that anymore. Like, I feel like in art in general, like we're so locked into like finding our niche and like doing what we do well that you don't see a lot of people like really getting out of their comfort zone so it's like really cool when you get to see a good example of someone being like oh i'm trying something different and it works you know um this is probably one of my favorite george romero movies because of the slow burn just because like it really like the tension in this movie you can cut with a knife you know yeah. like the, the the relationships between all of these characters, you can really tell that they are on their last like straw. And I think it adds just to so much to like what's going on and what's going on in their world. Um and like I can't wait to watch it again and glean new insights and it's yeah. And I'm really glad that I got to share this with all y'all. Awesome. All right. Hey, Jason. <laughs> You got a question? So, yeah, thanks for asking, Dino. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, Steve, what do you got for us next week? Next week, oh my God, I am so happy that for the first time you asked me this question, right? And it's for the right person because it, it's my turn oh! to make this movie. Uh, and this is a movie that I've been wanting to watch I've been putting it in the back of my list. For some reason, it popped again into conversation. A lot of people have described this movie as one of the greatest films, not only of this year, but of all time. Titanic. I was just about to say that. What film is it? Is it Titanic? Everything, everywhere, everything, everywhere, everywhere, all at once. Because Avatar 2, The it Way is. of the Water? Everything, everywhere, all at once. All right. This is probably the, the newest movie we've ever reviewed on the show. Yeah. This is like the really? third third multiverse Spider-Man movie. Yeah. 
All right, yeah. nice. I I I I missed that. I uh, I was already overseas, and everything apparently everywhere was not true because it didn't seem to make it to Paraguay. So I already have beef with that title. Hey, check your VHS tapes. They might be there. <laughs> <laughs> For El Don Dino, Jason Echoes, Miguel and JP, Raymond that left, and me, Steve the TV. We'll catch you next week. Bye bye. Bye.